afternoon, everyone. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today, my dear friends, we celebrate the memorial of St. Mary Magdalene. To become worthy of Christ's love for us in this Eucharist, let us pause for a while. And with humility, like the Blessed Mother, we beg the Lord for pardon and strength for all the sins that we have done. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others, with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example, we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see Him reigning in your glory, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Liturgy of the Word, First Reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. The children of Israel set out from Elim and came into the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after, the de after their departure from the land of Egypt. Here in the desert, the whole assembly of the children of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The children of Israel said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the, this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, however, when they prepare what they bring in, let it be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole congregation of the children of Israel, Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. When Aaron announced this to the whole assembly of the children of Israel, they turned toward the desert, and lo, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the grumbling of the children of Israel. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a Jew lay all about the camp, and when the Jew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the children of Israel asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. They tempted God in their hearts by demanding the food they craved. Yes, they spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the desert? Response, The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Yet he commanded the skies above, and the doors of heaven he opened. He rained manna upon them for food, and gave them heavenly bread. Response, The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance. He stirred up the east wind in the heavens, and by his power brought on the south wind. Response, Lord gave them bread from heaven. And he rained meat upon them like dust, 
and like the sand of the sea, winged fowl, which fell in the midst of their camp round about their tents, responds, The Lord gave them bread from heaven. still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she said, when she had the, said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon po ulit sa inyong lahat. Happy Feast Day of Mary Magdalene. Before anything else, let me clarify that Mary Magdalene is not the prostitute. Isa yan sa mga maling paniniwala at akala natin. No? She's not the prostitute. No? Well, Mary Magdalene is the Disciple to the disciples, the apostle to the apostles. No? Why? Because she served the apostles. She is also known as the disciple of Jesus. And one thing na ako rin po na surprise na, no? siya pala ang patroness ng order of preachers, yung OP. No? Sino ang kanilang patron? Saint Dominic. But the patroness is Mary Magdalene. Sabi ko, paano naging Mary Magdalene? When we listen to the gospel, you will know why. You know, the charism of the OP is to preach the gospel, to preach the word, to bring the good news. 
At I think wala nang ibang hihigit pang babae nagpakita ng, ng karismang ito, kundi si Maria Magdalena. She who first experienced the risen Lord, she gave the good news. And what is the good news? The Lord is risen. He is alive. Siguro yun yung magandang tanungin natin no? sa sarili natin. Tayo ba kagaya ni Mary Magdalene na nagdadala ng mabuting balita? O baka naman tayo ay parang si Mary Magdalene yung unang part ng gospel? The first part of the gospel, Mary did not recognize Jesus. Why? Kasi ang sentro niya ay yung problema niya. Anong problema niya? Nawawala ang Panginoon. Ano ang kanyang nangyari? Anong naranasan niya? Iyak ng iyak. Ganun tayo minsan eh. Pag tayo masyadong nabibigatan, nahihirapan, nasasaktan, wala ka na makita maganda. Kaya kahit yung mga kasama mo, ang gaganda, wala ka makita maganda. Gusto mo ikaw lang maganda. Lahat sila pangit. O sige na nga, ikaw na maganda. Bakit? Kasi nakafocus ka masyado sa problema mo, sa mahirap, sa mabigat. So you, you do not recognize anymore your blessings. You keep on counting kung ano yung mga wala sa'yo. Kung ano yung malayo sa'yo. Kung ano yung kulang sa'yo. Until you fail to recognize and to realize what you still have. Yun yun yung experience ni Mary. Baka naman madalas tayo ganun. Ito yung karakter ni Mary na masyadong nag-concentrate yung sa hirap, sakit, at kakaiyak. Kaya napagkamanan niya ang hardinero si Kristo. Ang Panginoon na palang kausap niya. Kaya tayo, let us always open our eyes, our minds, our soul. Baka naman yung hinahanap mong sagot sa problema mo, eh nasa harap mo na pala. Hanap ka ng hanap. Nandito lang pala. Kaharap mo na pala. And do not forget, no? that is the invitation of Jesus to each one of us today. How can we bring Him to others? You know, last Sunday, I was in Manila City Jail. Every third Sunday, I always visit Manila City Jail with some of my friends. Now, I think I shared this with you before. No? And there are two things that I always bring for our brothers' inmates. No? Kasi sa Manila City Jail, sa mga lalaki ako, sa Mandaluyong, hindi ako sa loob ha. Sa, sa Mandaluyong, sabi lang, Father, saan ka nakasin? Sa Mandaluyong, sa loob, sa labas. Pag kumisan, pumapasok ako sa loob. Pag nainip ako sa labas, eh, wala nang pinagkaiba eh. Yung mga nasa loob, parang nasa labas din. No? Yung ugali, parang pareho lang. No? Misa mukhang mas matino pa yung mga nasa loob. Pero ang pag ako po sa Mandaluyong, dito ngayon sa Mandaluyong na ako nakasin, ay, ay serve naman sa City Jail ng Mandaluyong sa mga babae naman. Pag sa, Man sa Manila, sa lalaki, at least patas nila. Dito po sa lalaki, I always bring soap and bread. Inandala ko lagi, soap and bread. Parang hindi nga lang magandang terno, no? Soap and bread. No? Kaya sabi ko sa kanila, pag masyado na kinahirapan, ipa naman yun ang matapos na yung paghihirap nyo. No? Ako, joke lang ako, nung gagawin nyo. Awa ng Diyos, wala pa namang gumagawa, no? no? Pero yun, pagdating ko ng Sunday, natawa lang po ako, Pagkating ko ng Sunday, talagang narinig ko, sabi niya sa, wow, may sabon. <laughs> Para bang yung tingin nila sa akin, ano factorial ng sabon talaga, no? Para pag nakita nila, at least, no, pag tingin nila na ako, babango tayo. Di no? nangyay, kayo kaya, no? Ano kaya ang nakikita ng mga tao sa inyo pag dumarating na kayo? Aside from sabon. No? You know, that is the invitation for us. Can we also become a good news to others. Sana hindi tayo magmukhang problema sa iba. Sana hindi tayo magmukhang pahirap sa iba. Sana hindi tayo magmukhang panira sa iba. Sana kapag nakikita tayo ng mga tao, masabi rin nila ang sinabi ni Maria Magdalena, I have seen the Lord. Let them see and experience the risen Lord in you. Amen. Let us tell God of our desire for a rich harvest on earth as we reflect on some of the poor soil in 
our lives as we say, Lord, make our lives fruitful. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That the Church may produce a rich harvest in the dedicated and committed lives of her ministers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That the harvest of justice may spring from the selfless labors of government officials, legislators, and judges, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That farmers and those who work in the field may reap the fruits of their labor and contribute to the welfare of the community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That the sick and those beset by life's misfortunes may be consoled by the harvest of encouragement from their community and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make our lives fruitful. That the faithful departed may come to their everlasting home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, make our lives fruitful. In silence, we pray for our personal intentions, and we pray for all those who are still suffering and who are still waiting for our forgiveness and love. Generous Father, help us to bring to harvest whatever seeds you have already sown in our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of Saint Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. 
And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The whole mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Antonio, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mary Magdalene, Padre Pio, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To whom him we demean him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is shows, all mighty Father, forever and ever. of 
our generous Father, we now sing the prayer Jesus taught us. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all useless distress, fears, and anxieties, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our many sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. You are too blessed to be stressed and to be depressed. With a smile, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Jesus Christ, He will never stop loving you. He will never stop forgiving you. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be but only say the word that my soul shall be healed.
let it spray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene clung resolutely to Christ her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for some announcements. Living Life Community's Lunch and Learn series will be turning two years old next month, August 2015. For our LNL Series 24, Father Luciano, Parish Priest of Our Lady of Lourdes in Camarín, Calaocan, will be our guest speaker on 13th August, second Thursday of the month. The topic will be Pope Francis, message to the Filipino people. It will be held here at the ADB Mini Room Theater, room 1810, special facilities block, from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Please bring along your friends, families, friends and colleagues. We have some surprises, gifts in store for you for our anniversary celebration. Living Life Community will be having a midnight outreach for this year, Year of the Poor, entitled Lingap Kiapo, Uplifting Kiapo, on Friday, 31 July, 10 p.m. to 12 midnight, at the Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene. Kiapo is mostly populated with the urban poor. There are lots of beggars with outreach arms asking for alms, and kids who are persistently following people for some change, food, or drinks. We will have sort of constant concelebrated Mass with the poorest of the poor inside Kiapo Church and provide spiritual gifts. We hope to provide physical nourishment to about 300 homeless people by the church every night. How can we help? By providing food and assist in feeding, transportation to and from Kiapo Church for volunteers and priests, cash support for packed food, for 300 homeless children, beggars, and elderly, toiletries, bath soap, face towel, toothbrushes, and toothpaste, small stuffed toys for kids, spiritual gifts, popular rosaries, anointing of the sick. Please confirm your participation before July 24, 2015 to Donna Aliposo at extension 6090 or contact any of the LLC members for more information. Thank you for whatever help you can extend. All LLC servants are invited to attend the meeting with our spiritual director, Father Benja Fahota, tomorrow, 16 July, 5.30 p.m. at the Cafeteria Lightwell. <laughs> and finally, let us thank Father Larry for celebrating the Holy <laughs> Father Hans, sorry. You know, sister, I see Christ in you. <laughs> and that must be our our parting words para sa isa't isa. Sabi niyo sa katabi niyo, I see Christ in you. <laughs> Pero lagi niyo tatandaan, mas masarap makita ang Panginoon sa mga taong mahirap mahalin at sa mga taong mahirap patawarin. Nandun ang Panginoon. Do not forget that. I am serious. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist has been offered. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Good afternoon. Thank you.